chance of that one certain promotion place and the playoff decider with Partick Thistle. Even back in August, however, today's meeting of Dundee United and Dunfermline on the second last Saturday of the season must have looked like a potential decider. Tanner Dice was full, the air crackled with tension and everyone knew that the result was absolutely crucial to the two teams' chances of a return to the Premier Division. Describing it for us, Jock Brown. Dundee United manager Billy Kirkwood keeps faith with the men who beat Hamilton Ackies on Monday night. So Christian Daly remains on the bench with Stephen Presley and Brian Welsh at centre-back. Dave Bowman and Grant Johnson will conduct the central midfield battle with Robbie Winters and Owen Coyle carrying a goal threat on the flanks to support Craig Brewster and Gary McSwigan up front. One significant change in the Dunfermline lineup: Brian Rice is relegated to the bench to make way for Ivo Dunbeeman. Manager Bert Payton has opted for a 3-4-3 formation with Alan Moore looking to provide quality service from the flank for Andy Smith and Stuart Petrie while United's wide threat is handled by Colin Miller and Mark Miller. It's a huge opportunity for Gary McSwiggy to set himself up for Premier Division football on a regular basis next season. He merely skirmished with top-level play at Rangers, but his recent surge of scoring form, taking his total to 17 for United, makes him a key player today. Hamish French was in the Dundee United side, which lost the 1991 Cup final to Motherwell. Shortly after, he moved to the Fernland, and since overcoming serious injury, he's become a very important midfield cog in Bert Payton's machine. Perhaps the biggest match of the refereeing career today of Alan Freeland from Aberdeen, one of our younger officials. As the Thurman go into a huddle, exactly the same fashion as Celtic before the game, fostering team spirit before the big kickoff. A marvellous setting for a crunch match to settle perhaps a first division promotion race and a place in the Premier Division at stake here. Dundee United can get there by right that they're going to win this match. A capacity crowd in perfect conditions. Sunny and clear overhead, the pitch in as good condition as any I've seen in recent weeks in Scotland. So the tactical formations looking to settle early on as Craig Robertson, the captain of the firm, that sends forward the first free kick. Well, a very heavy knock there for Morris Malpass. Challenge came from Stuart Petrie. Well, you see, the clearance was made here by Morris Malpass, and Stuart Petrie came in just a fraction late. Well, they could, could looking remarkably calm in the early stages. Beeman claiming all along with McSweegan. Free kick goes to United. It's a heavy treatment for. Gary McSwigan. Good running by Brewster. He's out the corner. And suddenly welcomed by this huge Tannadice crowd. Three stands packed with Dundee United supporters. And one with Tantarman fans. Old Coyle in the corner. Reached Brian Welsh, but Hamish French did just enough to put him off, I think. Welsh looking for his first goal of the season. So the pullback there, missed by French, and Welsh couldn't control it. Petrie over on the right hand side there against Malpass. It's Colin Miller's header. Whistle had gone, that's why Malpass went to catch that. It's a free kick to Newfoundland. What is Malpass born in Newfoundland, playing as his hometown team? Head flick on by Moore. Johnson trying to take care and Petrie scores! First blood to Newfoundland. Maxwell and Grant Johnson in a tangle in front of goal. But it's a dream start for Dunfermline. Opportunity at his best here by Stuart Petrie. Johnson waited for Maxwell to come. The keeper was undecided, but Petrie wasn't. Well, Bert Peter looks calm. Could scarcely have dreamt about that start. That 
really was given away. Shocking defending. Johnson waiting for Maxwell, and Johnson really should have thumped the ball into the stand. Well, the Perma, I'm sure, must have been very anxious indeed to settle on the lead they got after seven minutes. They've done just that. And at the moment, it's Billy Kirkwood, the Dundee United manager, who's got all the problems. And the track below is working hard to sort things out. Brewster's header, here's Mick Swiggin, he's very quick. On the far side is Coyle. Well, the ball is rising all the time in the right foot shot. A good opportunity created here by Mick Swiggin's pass and awareness of the position of Coyle outside him. It's sucked Colin Miller in, so there was time and space here for Coyle. with him there well Perry went down instantly there after that determined challenge he made he caught the boot of Petrie around his thigh that's why referee Freelands made the first use of his yellow card so booking there to add to the goal scored by Petrie early on And there's the boot which caught Mark Perry. It was reckless. Mike Swigan using Winters. It's a good early ball. Bruce not arriving as a shade late, but that was much better play from Dundee United. For the first time, actually, we've seen the pace of Winters exploited on the right, and Brewster was just about a couple of yards away from this. Well taken, first time and a half volley by Winters. long throw Give off Mark Miller back to Welsh it was deflected to the corner good spell of concerted attacking this from Dundee United the ball in the air causing a problem Welsh going for that with Andy Todd making the challenge at the same time that's why it's a corner Mark Perry tidying up there Once again, Mark Miller showing that the Reformer players do appear to have an extra edge about themselves in this match. They really started the game fired up. They have all the momentum going, and United are coming from behind, really. They're having to pick themselves up to match the commitment and determination of the Reformer. That'll be a great worry for Billy Kirkwood, the manager. Just an impression of brought at this stage that the Reformer players want things more. Billy Kirkwood seems to acknowledge that. Chance here for Petrie against Perry. Corner kicks me down. Petrie thought he was fouled in the process. Looking towards the referee, hopefully, here. He thought he was held back by Mark Perry. Well, the arm is dropped the raise there. 
Well, he's got a case. The arms are flying around, Petrie. And they Smith now is finding Alan Moore on the break. Welsh goes across, Moore testing his pace. Welsh has done well, he's held up the attack. Moore's cross, claimed by Maxwell. That was a good play on both sides. Brian Welsh initially doing well against Moore, but Moore showing the confidence to keep the ball. Well, the cross could be delivered. Swing in there with Brewster. Good start shot the top. That's the kind of shooting which has given McSwigan so many goals in his career. First with Rangers, then with Notts County, now with Dundee United. Quick turn, space for the snapshot. So down goes Bobby Winters, Mark Miller making the tackle. Winters had the pace, Miller was late with the challenge. So Winters is being sent back into the fray. Bowman sends in the free kick, Welsh attacks it. Cover was there, provided by Andy Smith. Boyle's cross, a good one, Westwood in trouble. Well, it's a goal kick, but that was a very brave challenge there by Brewster inside the area. Took a full brunt of Westwater's punch here. Dangerous ball played in by Coyle. And the Westwater punching Brewster rather than the ball. Well, these Dunfermline supporters, very happy indeed, I'm sure, with this first half performance. Well, they could well have a lot of work to do, I suspect, at half time. He's entitled to be very displeased if he thinks his players are not showing the same kind of hunger as the opponents. Dick Campbell doing his particular kind of motivation to the track. Todd forward looking for Petrie. In goes Welsh with a good aerial challenge. The half time whistle is gone. The Fairman have a precious lead provided in just seven minutes by Stuart Petrie. Who took the chance when Grant Johnston Ali Maxwell got in a fankle. But the Fernandes have looked the hungrier side throughout that first half. They're carrying an edge, just missing with the United play. And that's a major worry for the United manager, Billy Kirkwood, I'm sure, at the end of all. It's done the United nil. The Fernandes won. One significant change for Dundee United in half time. Christian Daly has come on to replace Gary McSwegan. So a change of policy perhaps up front. Christian Daly reverting to the position in which he initially made his name as a striker. So the Feldman set us off in the second half and we're looking to see the fruits of the labours of Billy Kirkwood at half time in the United camp. There's going to be a test of character, a test of determination and courage this match. Two very evenly matched teams that could boil down to the side which wants success more. And if ever is in the first half, that was Dunfermline. So I'm sure that Billy Kirkby will have insisted on that changing in the second period. And here's the Dunfermline attack again with Alan Moore. Colin Miller made a good run. He went offside though. Well, it was a good opportunity that had Miller timed it on fractionally better. Tom Brown on the line flagged him offside. Here's Alan Moore now, Malpass saw Miller coming, and he's just about a yard ahead of Malpass. He's gone. Well, surely by French, was he not? Well, the referee says so in the end. They used to be teammates, these two, but there's no love lost this afternoon for these 90 minutes. French and Bowman. Up goes Daly! Coming back off the crossbar. No justification for the arrival there of Christian Daly. That was a foul, all right. Miller on Winters. Well, the cross coming in, and Daly managed to find a yard. He was under pressure, though, at the end as the header came in and came off the crossbar. Still going according to plan, I'm sure, for the Fernand.
Here's Petrie. Oh, it's ambitious, a long-range attempt. Andy Smith got a touch on there, there's Moore. Smith again! Oh! Terrific effort by Andy Smith, that was so close. Well, the Nepalian bench, I can tell you, below is you know, holding heads and hands there. Did well initially to win that from Malpass, then took this with the ton superbly. Petrie to French, a miscue with a pass, allowing Malpass to step in. Late tackle there by Petrie on Malpass, and Petrie's in serious trouble now. He's going to be all the mark. Now, what an act of folly that was by Petrie. He was booked early in the match, he's yellow carded for the second time, and he's now on the mark. And the Fadlin, who've been in command and controlling the game, now goes down to ten men, and Petrie's doing himself no credit at all by his verbal abuse of Morris Malpass on the ground. Sensibly hustled away by Dick Campbell there. The South think we don't play the tax to Malpass, who made the clearance initially. But Petrie's on and off. Now just look at this. Malpass looking up, about to play the ball forward. And then the crunching tackle came in late. It was tailor made for a second yellow card. And Petrie really has done himself no credit at all by his verbal complaint towards. Morris Malpass in particular, Tom Brown, the lines of red, having a one referee feeling about activity on the Newfoundland bench, reacting to all that, so the referee will now take action. Speaking there to Dick Campbell, I think, in particular, Bert Payton also, Bert Payton mainly, in fact, calming them down on the track. And now Billy Kirkwood being spoken to by the referee. Free kick to United, they have an extra man advantage now. Welsh helps it on. Away by Todd for the corner. Well, the game has become ragged and tense again. The real cup tie now. The Fairman with a real decision to take. They have a one goal lead, but a one man deficit. And United are coming at them all the time now. Brewster's corner. Wes Water did very well indeed to punch that clear. Winters gets away from Miller. Colin Miller did well that time. His own coil. Back with Malpass. Westwater under pressure. Taking a heavy buffeting there by two United players, Presley and Daly. And Westwater copes very well with this. But you have to hand it to the keeper. He knew he was going to take abuse here, and he certainly did. Moore. Good running by Fleming. Andy Smith popping up on the right-hand side, but that's a very ambitious pass to attempt for Fleming. Better to retain possession. Well, he did very well indeed, Derek Fleming, against the combined efforts of Johnson and Bowman. Just the kind of relief that Perlman wanted at that particular moment. So here's Derek Fleming now with his free kick. taken in the end by Ali Maxwell but what about the defending here look at the space he had to attack that and run by Brewster and commanding goalkeeping there by Westwater clearly bellowed to Craig Roberts to stand aside there commanding his box very well indeed and Robertson's contribution to the Feldman's cross this afternoon also has been very important Now launches it high through the middle. Then Beeman helps it on for the corner. Well, it's remarkable how tight this promotion race is. That a goal for United now could transform things, keep them with that vital lead on the permanent. And West one at that time came and changed his mind. Very relieved to see that go behind. 
Another corner. Wooster plays it in again. Up goes Daly. A crossbar again to the rescue. Wes Wattle was completely beaten there with that header. Well, could that be the last throw of the dice for the United? Maybe not. Back to Winters. Desperate attempt by Winters. And not appreciated by his teammates either. Well, Christian Daly, I'm sure, can't believe this. The corner kick from Brewster flighted in. Daly, number 14 there, beat the keeper to the ball. For the fellow supporters there, anticipating his final whistle. Here's Grant Johnson, now Brewster, that's towards Winters. There by Mark Miller, as far as Presley. The whistling going on all around the Southern Fairland supporters, they want this game to end. The United wanted to continue. That's Colin Miller, back to Den Beeman. Well forward to Presley, the final whistle about to go to any second, I think. Maybe the last chance for Dundee United. Daly's header to Winters. In goes Todd. One of the Nefermann heroes, Andy Todd. Well, they've all been heroes so far. Except perhaps Stuart Petrie being ordered off for the second booking. West Walker under that. Huge cheer for an excellent catch for the keeper. I think it could be the end for Dundee United's attempts this afternoon. Look at the way West Weather takes this. And the final whistle goes. Dunn Fadlan go to the top of the first division. Pat Payton goes on to greet his players. It's been an outstanding performance by Dunn Fadlan. They were the hungriest side from the kickoff. They fought all the way. Christian Daly out of luck with two headers coming back off the crossbar. But that apart, the United find it very difficult to break down this thoroughly determined affirmative side. And over the piece, I reckon they're good value for the victory. Billy Kirkwood makes the dressing room. His promotion hopes are back in the melting pot. And the Fernland are now in the driving seat. Scenes of jubilation for the Fernland players and supporters all around Tannadice. It's been a rousing victory for the men from East End Park. Ian Westwater was undoubtedly a hero in goal and they look odds on now to play in the Premier Division next season. It's all down to the final matches next week. It's Dundee United nil, Dunfermline 1. Bert, the crowd behind tell you what they think of the Dunfermline performance this afternoon. What do you think of it? Uh, we, we felt good all week about the game and the, the players were certainly up for it. Uh, and they, they showed today that they, they were prepared properly, but it was the players on the day, I thought they were magnificent, and that they played for one another. Uh, we've not had the best of luck recently, but I think uh, you make your luck, and uh, they certainly made that today. We got a couple of wee breaks, we a couple of hit the bar, but for by that, I think we deserve to win. We worked very hard for the result, especially when we went to 10 men, but we're not getting carried away. We've won nothing yet. We'll enjoy tonight and then on Monday we'll get back in working for the Airdrie game. There seemed to be an air of confidence about the camp before this particular match. Was that right? Yeah, we've been written off uh, since we got beat for Hamilton at home. So we've, we've been out to prove them wrong. So we're delighted with the result. I take it you couldn't have dreamt of a better start? No, great start. I thought we started brightly and getting the goal that we did uh, took a bit of pressure off us and then we were able to play a bit. From your own point of view, in the heart of that defence, what was it like coping with the United front two? Well, really, my job was made easy by Evo Dan Beeman and Andy Todd. I thought they were superb today, so I was just tidying up behind them, and really I didn't have much to do. On the field, what was it like out there? The tension around the whole place seemed to be amazing. Was it the same on the pitch? I think uh, Dundee United felt more tense than us. I think that's how we felt anyway. We were quite relaxed, getting the goal early helped us, and we were able to play a bit of football. I think uh, the way Dunfermline set out their game plan, uh, it suited them down to a tee because we, it was up to us, uh, we had to take the responsibility and go and try and break them down, which uh, on the day we, we couldn't uh, manage to do that. Uh, I felt in the whole game it was a very poor game uh, considering the 
fans out here and the overhead conditions, I felt overall it was a very poor game. But it was up to us to take the responsibility and we couldn't do it. The other thing that occurred to me was that you were put under even more pressure by being at home. Is there something in that, do you think? Well, possibly, but I felt today it was a big match for both clubs and uh, they were fortunate to get the goal. And I felt we were possibly unfortunate not to take something out of the game, but we didn't deserve to win it. The couple of headers from Christian Daly, the one especially after half-time, it hits the bar. If we, that one goes in, then it might be a different picture because it's up to Dunfermline to come out. But the longer the game went on, they just sat in there, but we didn't take the responsibility and break them down. But it's now not within your own hands to win the automatic spot. What is the feeling in the camp now? Well, it's a lot of hard work uh, still to be done. I said that before the game. There's been a lot of twists and turns in this division and it can go to the last game of the season, which it might. And we, we might have to get in the playoffs. Nobody knows. Nobody can tell. I can't tell. We've just got to make sure we go down to Capolo next week and get three points. I take it Capolo wouldn't have been your first choice for a game of this importance. At the end of the day, we've got to go down and do it, Jock. If you want to get there, you've got to go to these places and win. Well, Dunfermline's first win at Tannadice for 22 years and one which guarantees them at least a place in the playoff. The Pars face Airdrie at home next week. A win will ensure the championship. Morton meet Dundee United in a real winner-take-all match at Capelo. Victory for either side will again mean a playoff place at worst. And St Johnston, despite their win over St Mirren today, cannot now reach the top two. Well, uh, Tommy, you were at the, the game today. Let's talk first about the fact there was a terrific atmosphere, wasn't there? Well, I think both sets of supporters deserve a lot of credit because it was a type of game that could have been quite hostile, but they created a really good atmosphere towards it. Uh, it was tight and tense, as I said earlier, and I think that basically Dunfermline showed the better attitude, especially in, in approaching the game and going about their work in the beginning because they were hungry and determined, got the goal, and then set their stall out and it was then counter-attacking. But I thought the way they started it and approached the game was excellent. The fact that they've maybe had some criticism, Murdo, about their bottle, as it's now known, maybe actually helped today. Well, I think so, and it's all credit to them. Because over the last three or four years, they've maybe lost in the playoffs or picked for second place. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think today was a magnificent re result for them. United just needed to win to win the championship. And uh, as I say, they've been up done the business and it's all in their own hands now they can go on and win the championship The goal came early Tommy, how did you feel about the defending to let Stuart Petrie in? Well I, I think when you see this here, I think Grant Johnson has got to throw his hands up here, he gets an opportunity here to clear the ball and the only way you leave it is if the goalkeeper shouts that he wants the ball but I think uh, Grant should definitely have played the ball away in that instance It's a good run by Stuart Petrie here he's come off Welsh at left back but again it's a wee misunderstanding between the goalkeeper and the full back and all credit to the striker, he's been brave enough to put the sole of his boot onto it. But again, I think the defender's got to take more responsibility, put the ball out for a corner and then defend from there. Mm. Particularly in the first half, Tommy, Dundee uh, United were a little bit disappointing. Dunferman looked the hungrier team and certainly looked the more dangerous team. Yeah, I thought there was three players that was very important players for Dunferman, was Moore, Petrie and Andy Smith. Mm. And uh, what they were doing, they were getting in between the, the United full-back mm. centre-half. Here's an instance where Alan Moore on the right-hand side got between Morris Malpass and Brian Welsh. It gets down into the right-hand corner and he comes in and plays the ball in the box here, but Ali Maxwell comes and claims that one excellent. Another one in the opposite side of the field where Stuart Petrie gets up the inside of Matt Perry. There's a pull and possibly a wee click here, possibly a penalty claim, but a great save by Ali Maxwell uh, there again. This is one Andy Smith who made a lot of important breaks from the middle of the park, gets on the end of a knockdown for Alan Moore and it goes over the bar. So they were three very important players for Dunfermline. Now, the uh, sending off of uh, Stuart Petrie aroused a little bit of controversy, obviously. I think, to be fair, all of us watching it the first time said, yeah, it looks a bad one, has to go. But maybe not, Tommy. Well, I, I was one of these ones, you know, where initially my thought is it's silly because he was booked earlier and it's one of these ones where he's coming and blocking. But when you look at it in the, in the rerun here, uh, there's definitely a question of whether there was contact uh, made in that instance. I was very surprised. The first time I seen it, I didn't think it was even a foul. Mm. Um, and I think the more I was watching it downstairs, you just see him coming across here. He's going in with his, his possibly his wrong foot to tackle here, but I think he just try to block the ball. And as you can see, his left foot's right across Morris Malpass. So there's no way he's got anything to make contact with Morris. And I think possibly Morris has got caught underneath his body more than anything. Maybe uh, if Morris has got an injury, it's because he's maybe caught himself. And if he was looking to play the player, he would have played him with the right foot rather That's than right. the left. If, if you want to, to stop the full back from playing the ball away, it's maybe your right foot, your left foot carries around and catches him in the back of the leg. But I think he's tackled with outside his left foot, trying to block the ball 
mm. played up the line, mm. and I've got sympathy for him there. Mm. Yeah. To be fair, I mean his reaction after both bookings didn't help him because he was very mouthy, oh, wasn't I it? I think basically mm. it started in the, the first half of the game when mm. you seen the injury to Morris Malpass early on. I think mm. Stuart Petrie and Alan Moore were up for the game. That's mm. what I was talking about attitudes in the early part of the game, and I think there was a wee bit of a vendetta going on in that <laughs> one. So, but as I say, my initial reaction was definitely an order off and a silly one mm. uh, in terms of the player going into a tackle that he should never have went in. But look at it on the rerun. I've now got to throw my hands up and say, was there contact? Absolutely. But he'll be out next week anyway, obviously. Now, Christian Daly, who's uh, one of those players who's maybe suffered through being so versatile. Yeah, well, I think he was important. He came on at half-time for Gary McSwigan, who was a bit under par. And you see him in this instance getting a header uh, that comes off the underside of the bar. It's interesting watching again, Tommy. Did he get a header here? Well, well this, is one, up. this is one where I think he got initially got a touch, but it definitely came off uh, Den Beeman. Uh, in the instance there and uh, you know unfortunate here's another instance Craig Brewster whips in a good corner kick he gets ahead of the goalkeeper and again it comes off the underside of the bar and these are important times for United he's always going to be dangerous Christian Daly as you said Dougie he was the centre forward in the early days now he's back at centre half thrown back on at centre forward mm. he's always a goal scoring threat he's good in the air and he's, he's difficult to mark mm. and again just a wee bit out of luck so now we've got the situation where Dunfermline's fate's in their own hands, which is all you can ever ask, I suppose. Mind you, Airdrie's not the opposition you would choose in that situation, Murdo, is it? Well, no team likes to be there on the day when the other side goes and they achieve something. Mm. Even likes it for the, the game tomorrow mm. with Aberdeen. They'll be up for the match because they don't want to see all the celebrations going on at their expense. Mm. And I'm sure Airdrie will go next week and they'll have a right go. They've got nothing to play for now. A wee bit of pride, but they'll not want the celebrations when they're there. So you're going to face one of those three clubs, aren't you? Dunfermline, United or Mon. Let me put you in the spot. Who would you prefer to have in that uh, vital playoff? Very difficult to say. Uh, it's chopped and changed so often. I think we've had about nine teams watching that league this season to who's going to finish in the playoff position. Mm. But it's, it'll be very difficult because uh, if you get United, if they slip off the top, if they, they don't manage to get the, the top spot, they'll be difficult. But to be fair, you, you can't fancy a trip to Tannadice, I wouldn't have thought. Would you not maybe rather go to Capolo? Not at all. I think uh, they've had a magnificent season. They've put so many teams under pressure. Everybody thought last week St Johnson coming with a great run. Mm. They'll go and beat Morton and then get up to third spot. Morton, to their credit, battled away, won one nothing. So they're in the, it's all in their own hands now. They beat United. They know at least they'll get a playoff position next mm. week. How tough will it be for Thistle, Tommy, facing one of those three? Well, I, I've seen uh, quite a few of the, the first division teams and the one thing that, that's coming out is the title's sitting there for a hungry, determined team to go and claim it, but it's, it's went from Dunfermline to United to St Johnson and there's none of them showed the right appetite to go and take the title. Mm. So, really, the, there are three teams, but Morton, as we're talking about, everybody keeps neglecting Morton. I think, really, you're we're talking about Tommy Burns, Manager of the Year. Alan McGraw must come into that for what he's done mm. and uh, the, the budget that's available to him. But it's going to be very, very difficult. You know, I think my money's on United. No being biased or anything like that. But I think <laughs> United will be there or thereabouts. I don't think any of us would be too surprised if there were a few more twists and turns still to come in the final week.